Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another card making video. Today I'm going to share some floral cards or floral stenciling three ways using brand new products from the Hero Arts Spring 2023 catalog release. We will be creating some florals or stenciling florals on a die cut, stenciling some florals that have been stamped and embossed for a big background stamp, and then stenciling some florals for an individual stamped image and die cutting that image. We're gonna start with this beautiful new B Florals Window Fancy Die from Hero Arts, die cutting it from a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of smooth white cardstock. I am using 110 pound weight cardstock for my stenciling here today. I'm going to go ahead and do this on a glass mat to help get any of those stray ink blending type of issues. It's a lot easier to clean up off of the glass mat than my self healing mat. We're going to take the coordinating B Florals stencil set and do some stencil layering. If you have never done stencil layering before, it is a fantastic way to allow you to very quickly and easily color in an image with stunning results. So for all of my friends who do not like to color, I think that layering stencils are the way to go. Your results are beautiful every single time. I'm st starting with some butter bar with the first stencil and you can see that it's colored in my florals and parts of the bee. Next, we're gonna grab some spicy mustard. I, I actually love spicy mustard, the food, <laughs> but I love this as the color. It truly is spicy mustard. I don't know about you guys, but yellows are one of those inks that are hit or miss for me with a lot of companies. And Hero Arts has some of my all time favorite yellows. Butter Bar and Spicy Mustard are two of my favorites. So we are also adding the layering for our flowers right now, plus adding a little more color or the base color to our bumblebees. I know the bees are a little hard to see right now, since there's a lot of the same color going on, but I promise here in a minute you'll really see the difference. Now I'm actually gonna set this stencil aside and I'm going to do the greenery and we're going to do the final layering last and I'll show you why here in a minute. For my greenery on all three cards actually today, I am going to use moss and field greens. So the base color here is going to be the moss color and I'm gonna go all over any of the greenery. The beautiful thing about this B Florals window is it cuts out that center portion of the window, allowing you to make a shaker or pop it up or add something contrasting back behind it while giving you this amazing detailed window. And I just love that there are dyes or pardon me, stencils to use to color this. It's so much faster than coloring with markers. Next, we're gonna take field greens and we're gonna go over what we just did to add the veining to all of the leaves and really give it that depth and dimension that will make this stand out. I accidentally bumped it, so I'm gonna just move it back. Now we want to go with our third, or pardon me, my, our fifth and final stencil for this set. And this is gonna be the detailing stencil for some of the greenery as well as the bumblebees and the center of some of the flowers. I decided to do charcoal. You can apply the charcoal over the green and it's just gonna make it a little bit deeper and darker. And then of course over the bumblebees, we are adding in that great black stripe. We're adding in some detail to the antennae and heads, wings, uh, flower centers. So I use charcoal for all of this. And the bees are really going to pop now in this design. I absolutely love it. Oh my gosh, you guys, this card is so pretty already. Look at that beautiful window. Now I did get a little smudge of green on there, but that's okay, no worries. Um, we're gonna kind of disguise it a little bit and I'm not gonna re-stamp it or re-die cut, pardon me, not stamp, re-die cut and stencil it. I'm gonna use second generation stamping with the moss ink and one of my favorite 
background texture strips from a very recent Hero Arts release. I love this. And I'm gonna go kind of all over around the edge of the panel adding some text. What's great about this particular stamp as opposed to an all over background is that you can really kind of control it around the edges and maybe not add text all over everything. I don't mind a little text over some of it here and there, but this just allows you to go around the edges and fill it in plus add some amazing interest to our background. Now this technique alone is not gonna cover up the smudge. And I had intended on doing the text all along, but I did decide to do a little bit of ink blending around the edges, which are, is going to help disguise the smudge a little bit more. And I really ended up loving how it turns out. I thought I would use moss to do my ink blending and I even started and instantly I was like, you know, I don't think I like that. Let's try charcoal instead. So I am instead gonna take that charcoal ink and go around the edges and darken the ink around the corners. Keep in mind these are all dye inks, meaning they will absorb into the cardstock and lighten over time. But it's still going to really give you kind of that beautiful, you know, kind of focus in, I guess, of look. I really love it how, how this turned out. Once we have our ink all the way around the edges, we are ready for our next technique with floral stencils. And that is going to be stamping an image, stenciling and die cutting. So this is probably something you're pretty familiar with. We see a lot of that uh, throughout card making now. I decided instead of stamping my image with a black ink, I'm going to stamp it with something soft that almost fades into the background. I'm gonna use Hero Art Sand Ink, but really any light ink color is going to work here. And I did end up having to uh, ink mine several times, brand new stamp, never inked it before, so I think that's why. Again, this is a dye ink. It will absorb into the cardstock and fade. Plus, once we add our stenciling on top, it is not near as prevalent and the soft look that this base color gives to our design, I can't say enough how it just softens the florals so much more than if you would have stamped it with a black ink. A black ink is going to be so super harsh and that's not the look I was going for. So I am leaving this in because you guys, how dumb can, I be. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to make this tinsel line up. Um, duh. There you go, Nicole. F tilt it at an angle. In case anyone else is having issues, I'm here uh, to show you what not to do, <laughs> I guess. I'm going to start with Soft Blossom and do an all over layer of Soft Blossom here on my cardstock panel. And then we're going to use some Azalea a nice deep dark pink. The other colors we're gonna use here will be our moss and field greens. And then we will also use a little bit of the spicy mustard, I think is what I ended up using, that or butter bar for the flower centers. There are only four stencils. So this is stencil number two, let's do the azalea before I get too far ahead of myself. And this is a beautiful, bright, definitely an azalea pink color. It's absolutely stunning. And we'll move that out of the way. And then we're gonna do our base of our leaves and I just wanna tilt that till I get it lined up. And take the moss and do a nice all over for the base leaf color. And then we will do some field greens for the leaf detail and do the little bit of yellow in the flower center. Now with this particular stencil set, it does leave part of the background design white, which is totally fine. I did take whatever ink was left on my blend pink blending brush and I did not apply hardly 
any pressure at all. I am going to slightly go over parts of that in my image just to give it a tiny tap, little bit of color, but not a lot. I used Butter Bar in the center, by the way. Oh my goodness, so, so beautiful. There, it was just a little too harsh white, and so I did just add a little tiny touch of color. Next, I am stamping the beautiful Flowers and Bees bold print background. I know I've mentioned this many times, but Hero Arts makes some of the best background stamps out there, and this is no exception. And the fact that there's a stencil set to color in this background, oh my word, you guys, amazing. So I am adding some gold embossing powder from Hero Arts. I stamped it with embossing and watermark ink and we will heat emboss this entire background panel with our heat tool. And do you see the cute little bumblebees here? I am here for the bumblebees. Uh, anyone who follows my cross stitching floss tube playlist here on YouTube probably knows this, that I absolutely love bumblebees. I love all the bumblebee cross-stitching charts and things like that. Um, and there's a whole bunch of new ones coming out. I can see that bees are big in all crafting. That's kind of where I'm going with my little story here. <laughs> kind of got off track, but I felt like we're just seeing a lot of bumblebees and I love it. I really, really love it. So I want to make sure I get the entire panel heat embossed. You could do emboss resist, all kinds of different things, but we are going to be stenciling this background panel with the coordinating stencils. Again, I have not really seen this done um, a whole lot or if all out in the industry, and I think it is brilliant. I would love to see more of this for coloring in our background stamps. When it's a very detailed background stamp like this, a lot of times it's very daunting to try to color that all in. I've done it. I've done it many times, but this literally took minutes when coloring a background is going to take an hour or more. I'm coloring in this entire background with pale tomato ink, giving a nice base color to our roses. I did try to do a different color combination for each card just for fun. Lots of really pretty little red detail here. And then we are going to add the next layer for our background with some Cherry Hero Arts ink. And just make sure when you're working with your stencil to kind of move it around and always look at all of these sections to make sure that it's lined up. I like to double check everywhere and I couldn't get my lid off. That's always fun. And I'm doing a nice dark layer for the shading of the flowers. We will use moss and field greens again for the leaves and I do want to tell you that for the leaves, it's just a single stencil that I went ahead and applied moss everywhere. And then I'm going to just kind of randomly pick areas to add a little bit of field greens to deepen and darken it. Wouldn't this background also be beautiful for Valentine's and love type cards? I could see doing that easily. That would be super pretty. And do the, the roses in any color. So many color combinations would really work here. And I like the smaller size blending brush for this, but you could use a big one. I like the small because I feel like I can kind of just get into those little nooks and crannies easier. Not moving the stencil, I'm now going to load it up with field greens and you can see I'm only adding it in little sections here and there. Not full on like I did with the moss, just want to add a touch of color. Now in a lot of areas we are getting embossed resist, so you will want to take a dry paper towel or a dry microfiber cloth or something and rub it over the surface when you're finished to remove any of that ink that might be sitting on top of the embossed area. And I love how this background looks. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Next, 
we are going to create a couple of extra backgrounds. The first card background I created with the bees and the flowers or the roses and the pink back the pink um, columbine both really need something else going on so I am going to stamp one background using the soft blossom ink and this is the brand new background bold print that is called burlap and it is awesome i love fabric texture background stamps they are a great basic they work for all kinds of things and just really 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 clever i love it and then i'm going to take my big blending brush and the soft blossom ink and i'm going to go all over the surface and really create my own pattern paper i love creating my own pattern paper out of background stamps or individual stamps or anything really to use for all of my card making. And we're gonna go nice and dark around the edges and then a little bit lighter in the center. I will tell you that I ended up trimming this panel down off camera to four by five and a quarter so that I could use it on a white card base and have a nice white border all the way around that ties in beautifully with the white outline from die cutting the Columbine and there's what that's gonna look like. Oh, on the back of that piece, I had actually done something else. That's called not wasting cardstock. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and clean my stamp really good. We're gonna take some moss ink and we are going to stamp another background panel. I probably wouldn't have, have had to do one that was A2 sized, but I did go ahead and do the whole thing. And this is gonna go back behind the window opening in our bumblebee card. Same thing as before, we're gonna stamp with one color of ink, and then we're going to add our ink blending over the top to shade the entire panel. And it's just a tone on tone. You could do this in all of the colors of the rainbow and have a bunch of your own burlap, burlap, burlap pattern paper ready to go for all kinds of card making, backgrounds, die cutting, all of that good stuff. Now we need to add, get some sentiments and then we'll put it all together. I love the new Everyday Sentiment Strips from Hero Arts. This is the third in their series that works, works with their sentiment strip die that die cuts lots of sentiments all at once. I cannot recommend this die more and anytime a company keeps coming out with products that work with something that they already have released, I am here for it. It really extends the life of the products that we invest in, and I love that. Plus, with this particular or this kind of stamp, you get tons of sentiments with one stamped image, with one pass of the die cutting machine, and I only used a fraction. I used more than one on most of the cards, one, more than one sentiment strip, I'm sorry, I should say. However, I have a bunch left over that can be used for future projects, which I have done with both the Christmas and then the love themed sentiment strips that they previously released. And I have them on hand and I have used them on other cards. I will, I have them all in a, like a little uh, mug and I just pick them out when I need a sentiment strip or I look through them and they are perfect for that. So you kind of don't have to get out, you know, all of your stamps or your embossing powder and all of that, your die cutting machine to cut sentiment strips. If you hold on to these, a lot of times you can just use one of these if you're looking for one. I'm going to use the same gold embossing powder that I used for the background on that um, bold print, the flowers and bees bold print we did earlier and heat emboss all of these sentiment strips, line it up with the sentiment strip die, and we're going to run that through our die cutting machine. One suggestion I do have for that sentiment strip die, I always tape mine in place. If you are nervous at all that your die may shift, 
Uh, whether you have a, mat, a magnetic platform or not for your die cutting machine, I would suggest taping your die in place at least in a couple spots. I usually do the top and the bottom just to make sure. You could tape it in one spot. That's what I normally do for a lot of my die cutting. But with something that really needs to line up with all of these strips, there's not a lot of room for error, I guess is what I'm saying. I want to make sure all of these strips are usable. I do have a big ink blob in the middle that you see there, the embossed blob. Uh, that was just from pushing too hard when I stamped my sentiments, but luckily it's in a big wide open spot and I can kind of avoid it. Okay, now that we have all these, I do wanna stamp a few additional sentiments because I love cursive sentiments with my sentiment strips. To go with the sentiment strips, we're going to use the new Friendly Messages Stamps and Dies and stamp those sentiments on another piece of white cardstock using either charcoal or azalea. And I have a few options to work with here. And I opted to do the charcoal instead of a dark black because I thought it just blended into the cards better. So I've popped up the B Florals window over my green burlap background, and I'm going to partially put foam adhesive underneath the part of Happy Birthday from that Friendly Messages set that hangs, that is in the center. Anything hanging over what's already popped up, I'm not gonna put foam adhesive under that, and I'm going to secure it to my card. I'm gonna grab a couple of sentiments, and I'm gonna trim them apart because a lot of the strips have two sentiments per strip. Any of those you just wanna cut apart, and I've angled, like just with my scissors, I've trimmed a, the ends at an angle, and I'm adding a couple, putting the straight end under parts of the window, the die cut window, pardon me, and the then the angled end on the other. For the all over flowers and bees bold print background, I am going to trim this at an angle. I'm also going to then take the bigger portion and I'm going to use a ruler to draw a line because I found if I don't, then I don't trim it the right uh, width at all when I'm working at an angle. I'm gonna remove that little skinny piece and set that aside for something else and then I'm going to back the upper and lower portions with foam adhesive and adhere that to my card base. That little strip in between that's going to be open is where I'm going to place my sentiment. And I've only left the tiniest, tiniest little strip because I don't wanna lose much of that beautiful background we stenciled. The strip is going to allow though the sentiment to really stand out. And I did pop it up with a little foam adhesive and I'm going to trim another sentiment strip and adhere that right underneath and finish with a little heart accent at the end of the sentiment. And for the happy birthday, I'm just going to cut these straight and place it underneath with a little foam tape. Super simple, but it really allows the background to shine. For our Columbine background, I'm going to adhere the entire panel to a white top fold card base. I did trim that panel down to four by five and a quarter. And then I will pop up the floral with foam adhesive and pop up my greetings with foam adhesive as well. You can see where I stamped off that original background um, on the back side of what I stamped the Columbine. So no cardstock went to waste here. I love the best wishes in pink. I feel like it just coordinates with this background so much better than a black or even a charcoal sentiment would have. And again, we're gonna add multiple sentiment strips to this design. I'm gonna finish with a scattering of pearls and hearts on each and my cards are all finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these floral stencils three ways featuring brand new spring 2023 Hero Arts products. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. 
I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content, you'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month, monthly lives for my top tier patrons, and more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again next time.